Paul-Michel Foucault was a French historian and philosopher, associated with the structuralist and post-structuralist movements. Foucault's theories primarily address the relationship between power and knowledge, and how they are used as a form of social control through societal institutions. His thought has influenced academics, especially those working in communication studies, anthropology, psychology, sociology, criminology, cultural studies, literary theory, feminism, Marxism and critical theory. Foucault's History of Madness in the Classical Age, 1961, originated in his academic study of psychology, his work in a Parisian mental hospital, and his own personal psychological problems. It was mainly written during his postgraduate Wanderjaren, through a succession of diplomatic and educational posts in Sweden, Germany, and Poland. A study of the emergence of the modern concept of mental illness in Europe, History of Madness is formed from both Foucault's extensive archival work and his critique of what he saw as the moral hypocrisy of modern psychiatry. According to Foucault, the new idea that the mad were merely sick, mentally ill, and in need of medical treatment was not at all a clear improvement on earlier conceptions. The other book that made Foucault famous, Les Mots et Les Choses, translated into English under the title The Order of Things, is in many ways an odd interpolation into the development of his thought. Its subtitle, An Archaeology of the Human Sciences, suggests an expansion of the earlier critical histories of psychiatry and clinical medicine into other modern disciplines such as economics, biology, and philology. And indeed there is an extensive account of the various empirical disciplines of the Renaissance and the classical age that precede these modern human sciences. But there is little or nothing of the implicit social critique found in the history of madness, or even the birth of the clinic. Instead, Foucault offers an analysis of what knowledge meant, and how this meaning changed, in Western thought from the Renaissance to the present. At the heart of his account is the notion of representation. Here we focus on his treatment of representation in philosophical thought, where we find Foucault's most direct engagement with traditional philosophical questions. Foucault explicitly presents the order of things as an archaeological approach to the history of thought. Three years later, in 1969, he published The Archaeology of Knowledge, a methodological treatise that explicitly formulates what he took to be the archaeological method that he used not only in the order of things but also, at least implicitly, in History of Madness and the birth of the clinic. The key idea of the archaeological method is that, systems of thought and knowledge, epistemes or discursive formations, in Foucault's terminology, are governed by rules, beyond those of grammar and logic, that operate beneath the consciousness of individual subjects, and define a system of conceptual possibilities, that determines the boundaries of thought in a given domain and period. Archaeology was an essential method for Foucault, because it supported a historiography that did not rest on the primacy of the consciousness of individual subjects, it allowed the historian of thought to operate at an unconscious level that displaced the primacy of the subject found in both phenomenology and in traditional historiography. Discipline and Punish, published in 1975, is a genealogical study of the development of the gentler, modern way of imprisoning criminals rather than torturing or killing them. While recognizing the element of genuinely enlightened reform, Foucault particularly emphasizes how such reform also becomes a vehicle of more effective control. To punish less, perhaps, but certainly to punish better. He further argues that, the new mode of punishment becomes the model for control of an entire society, with factories, hospitals, and schools modeled on the modern prison. We should not, however, think that the deployment of this model was due to the explicit decisions of some central controlling agency. Foucault's analysis shows how techniques and institutions, developed for different and often quite innocuous purposes, converged to create the modern system of disciplinary power. At the core of Foucault's picture of modern disciplinary society, are three primary techniques of control, hierarchical observation, normalizing judgment, and the examination. Foucault's history of sexuality was originally projected as a fairly straightforward extension of the genealogical approach of discipline and punish to the topic of sexuality. 
Foucault's idea is that the various modern fields of knowledge about sexuality, various sciences of sexuality, including psychoanalysis, have an intimate association with the power structures of modern society, and so are prime candidates for genealogical analysis. The first volume of this project, The History of Sexuality, Volume I, The Will to Knowledge, published in 1976, was intended as the introduction to a series of studies on particular aspects of modern sexuality, children, women, perverts, population. It outlined the project of the overall history, explaining the basic viewpoint and the methods to be used. On Foucault's account, modern control of sexuality parallels modern control of criminality by making sex, like crime, an object of allegedly scientific disciplines which simultaneously offer knowledge and domination of their objects. Overall, Foucault's work was dark and pessimistic, though it does, however, leave some room for optimism in that it illustrates how the discipline of philosophy can be used to highlight areas of domination. In doing so, the ways in which we are being dominated become better understood, so that we may strive to build social structures that minimize this risk of domination. In all of this development, there had to be close attention to detail. It is the detail which eventually individualizes people. Foucault's analysis of power comes in two forms, empirical and theoretical. The empirical analyses concern themselves with historical and modern forms of power and how these emerged from previous forms of power. Foucault describes three types of power in his empirical analyses, sovereign power, disciplinary power, and biopower. Foucault's work on biopower has been widely influential within the disciplines of philosophy and political theory, particularly for such authors as Giorgio Agamben, Roberto Esposito, Antonio Negri, and Michael Hart. His discussions on power and discourse have inspired many critical theorists who believe that Foucault's analysis of power structures could aid the struggle against inequality. They claim that through discourse analysis, hierarchies may be uncovered and questioned by way of analyzing the corresponding fields of knowledge through which they are legitimated. This is one of the ways that Foucault's work is linked to critical theory. His work Discipline and Punish influenced his friend and contemporary Gilles Deleuze, who published the paper Postscript on the Societies of Control, praising Foucault's work, but arguing that contemporary Western society has in fact developed from a disciplinary society into a society of control. Deleuze went on to publish a book dedicated to Foucault's thought in 1988 under the title Foucault. Foucault's discussions of the relationship between power and knowledge has influenced post-colonial critiques in explaining the discursive formation of colonialism, particularly in Edward Said's work Orientalism. Foucault's works have exercised a powerful influence over numerous humanistic and social scientific disciplines as one of the most influential and controversial scholars of the post-World War II period. According to a London School of Economics analysis in 2016, his works Discipline and Punish and the History of Sexuality were among the 25 most cited books in the social sciences of all time, at just over 100,000 citations. In 2007, Foucault was listed as the single most cited scholar in the humanities by the ISI Web of Science. Among a large quantity of French philosophers, the compilation's author commenting that, what this says of modern scholarship is for the reader to decide, and it is imagined that judgments will vary from admiration to despair, depending on one's view.